Welcome to the presentation and demo on IBM Infosphere Data Growth Solution for Oracle Ibisuit. Companies worldwide are affirming the value of database archiving as the best practice for managing data growth. The key benefits of archiving include risk reduction. We safely archive the data, still meeting the company's retention and data compliance policies. The data would still be accessible for audit and e-discovery requests while ensuring a lean production data, which minimizes the impact of disaster events. Business efficiency. The next benefit is increase in business efficiency in terms of meeting the service level goals to ensure timely completion of key business processes for mission critical applications. Data access strategy. You can also implement scalable archiving strategies that easily adapt to you on ongoing EBIS requirements. The other identifiable benefits is the cost reduction in the hardware and software storage that is achieved by archiving the data to a cheaper alternate database or file formats. The figure represents an ideal archival process. To the left is the production database from which Optim intelligently moves inactive or infrequently accessed data that still has value to lower cost storages while retaining the data integrity in both the environments. The data archived can be stored in a file format or to an alternate database. Optim also provides the ability to universally search and access data from both production and archive environments using the same native application or XML, ODBC, JDBC or any other third-party report writers. If need be, Optim can selectively retrieve and restore data from the archive files back to the production database. IBM has developed a solution specific for Oracle EBIS wherein the archive data is seamlessly accessed by the Oracle apps using the native application access feature. This feature allows the users based on their configured responsibilities to view only the archive data or only the production data or have access to both the data. The figure here is a representation of native application access architecture. The Optim Arc schema references the table in archive database as well as in production using which the user can extract data from archive data as well as production responsibilities. Now let's proceed to the product presentation. This is the Optim console for Oracle EBS. We're logging in with the credentials of operations and for the demo let us select the database as PST app. This leads us to the Optim workbench. The system verification report displayed in the center of the screen shows the list of Oracle EBIS modules whose solutions are available in Optim and the status of the same. As you can see, only the GL and OM applications have been installed and are active. For the demo's purpose, we would be looking at the GL module specifically. These are the following available options in Optim for the GL module which include archive, select, delete and restore. Let us take a look at the jobs that have been run so far. This screen shows the GL module has been configured and the other prerequisites are in place. Now let us get to the action of selecting the data for archival. Let us give a name to the archival instance that we are planning to run for the demo as GL selection and choose the responsibility as GL Vision Operations USA and the ledger as Vision Operations USA and select a period as Jan 2007 for the demo. For the GL archiving to be done, it is mandatory that the GL for the period selected is closed. Only then would Optim allow the data for the period to be archived. Optim now has started the process of identifying the data for archival for the period selected. This command does not delete the data but it just selects the data from the database and creates an archive file out of it. The console shows the list of submitted jobs by Optim for the current status. The GL selection status shows running at this moment. Let's analyze it further by clicking on the job. This pop-up screen shows the stages the request has gone through and the current status of the same. While we wait for the selection process to go on, let's open up Oracle application and look at the data we are looking at archiving. We are now in Oracle ABS app. Let us log in with credential operations. Let us select the same GL Vision operations. We had selected in Optim and select the journals. Let us find the journals for the period Jan 2007 which we had selected for archival. 
The current screen shows the data in GL for various modules which includes the fixed assets, inventory and other modules which is now eligible for archival and the period is closed. Since the GL data flows in from various modules, it is highly recommended that the data for the modules are archived before proceeding to GL module to maintain data integrity. Let us check the number of journal records that are there for the period. There are about 133 journals as shown in the bottom of the screen for the period and all these journals are supposed to be archived as per our archival plan. Now let's change the responsibility to archive responsibility. Let's check out the journal for the same period that is Jan 07. Here in the bottom of the screen you see that there are no records for the period under this responsibility. We do the same exercise again for a combined responsibility. Let's check the journal for the same period that is Jan 07. By design it should show data for that period as combined responsibility shows data from both archive and production database. Since the data is currently in production it would show up in combined responsibility. Let's now go back to the Optim console to see if the selection activity is completed or not. Yes, the job has been completed and an archive file would have been created with an archive ID for this job. Let's have a look at the archive summary report. Here you see an archive ID has been created for the GL module. When we click on the archive ID, it opens up the log file for the archive request. The log stores the information on the number of tables and the rows archived for this job. As you see, there are no failed requests. These are the tables related to the GL module. These tables include transaction tables, context tables and reference tables which have been selected for archival. However, the records from transaction tables are the only ones that will be deleted during the deletion process which we will show later in this video. The records from other tables are extracted only for reference purpose and would not be deleted or restored to archive database. It will be available in archive file for future references. Now that the selection has been completed successfully and an archive file has been created with the data, let's proceed to delete the data from the production. We select the GL delete option and select the archive ID that has been created for the job and process the delete request. This takes us to the same job page for us to view the status of the jobs. We will have to wait a few minutes for this to process as Optim has to validate the data before deletion. The time for deletion usually depends on the data size as well as the infrastructure in place. Let's refresh and check. Yes, the delete request has been processed successfully. Let us go back to the summary report where I will show you the log again. The delete re request log has been appended to the previous log we had seen for the selection as it is the same archive ID. This shows you the tables that have been selected for deletion and the number of rows that have been deleted. These are the transaction tables that have been deleted from the GL module for the period. As mentioned earlier, the other tables are not deleted. Now let's check for the data in Oracle EBS. Let's check with Vision Operations Responsibility from the journals. Let's check out the same period of Jan 07. As expected, there is no data fetched from the period as shown in the bottom of the page as we have deleted it from the production database. Let's now log in to the archive responsibility and select the journals for the same period of Jan 07. And as shown, there are no records fetched as we are yet to restore the data to the archive database from which Oracle EBIS has been configured to fetch data from for the archived responsibility. Let's repeat it for the combined responsibility by logging in as Vision Operations Combined and check the journals for Jan 07 again. Here too, no records are fetched 
as the GL data for Jan 07 is neither there in the production nor in the archive database. We will now restore the data from the archive file to an alternate database which is already configured in Optim. Let us select the same archive ID for the restore. It again takes us to the jobs dashboard. Let's check on the status of this restore activity. This again would take some time depending on the data volume. Since we are using a very small set of data for the demo, it should be done soon. Let's refresh the screen again. Yes, the restore process has been completed successfully. We will check the archive summary report and check out the log for the archive ID. The archive status shows the symbols which indicate that the archive file has been created and the data is restored. A view into the log file will show us the appended restore details. As we can see, the data from the archive file has been inserted successfully and there are no failed rows. The tables restored are the ones that have been deleted from the production database. Let's go back to our EBS instance and check on the data again. We will use the archive responsibility to check if the data is available from the archive database. Let us select the journal for the same period Jan 07 and here you can see that the data for Jan 07 is displayed. As mentioned earlier, the archive responsibility is fetching data from the archive database. Let's do the same again with the combined responsibility and select the journal for the same period Jan 07. And you can see that the entire set of data is available in the combined responsibility too. As this responsibility is fetching data from both production and archive database. Now we have completed the three steps of selection, deletion and restoration. The other way of doing the entire exercise is to select the general ledger archive which creates the file and deletes the data in the same job. And you can use the general ledger restore to restore the database to the archive database. We have finished demo for GL module on archive, delete and restore process from the EBS console as well as from the EBS Oracle application for production responsibility, archive responsibility and combined responsibility. Now we will look at the access definition editor, archive request editor, delete request editor, insert request editor and the restore request editor on core optim. This is the optim console we will use for core optim to perform the archive delete and restore process. For the demo's purpose we have already imported the GL Optim export file. Optim export file or the OEF consists access definitions such as archive request, delete request, insert request and the restore request. It also contains the primary key, table maps and relationships. The identifier window which displays the list of identifiers serves as the prefix for object definitions. Let us have a look at the Access Definition Editor window, which describes the set of related data to be archived. It is also used to manage and maintain lists of tables, relationships and to specify the selection criteria to archive. And this is the Tables tab. It displays the list of table names in Access Definition to specify the data to be archived. To create the tables list, we need to specify and add the start table and other tables like transaction tables, context tables and reference tables. In the table specifications column, the icons indicate selection criteria or other specifications for the table. As you can see, there is an SQL icon in the selection list. If we click on the SQL icon, it will display the SQL tab where an SQL WHERE clause is specified for the table. We can have any business criteria specified against a table that defines the candidates for data archival. It allows all types of SQL statements. This is the Relationships tab which defines column in a parent table that relate to corresponding columns in a child table. It also defines the traversal path for selecting data from tables referenced in an access definition. The start table and any reference tables listed on the tables tab are always included in the process. Now let us explore the variables tab. We use the variables tab to assign variables for selection criteria or SQL statements in an access definition. By assigning variables we can provide values for the variables each time the access definition is processed. 
as an option we can also provide default values for the variables now let us have a quick understanding of the archive request editor window the archive request defines the parameters for archiving data from source tables and saving the data to an archive file the data in an archive file can be browsed or selectively restored at any time when we create an archive request we must specify the archive file name archive index name and the access definition options now let's have a look at the delete request editor window the delete request allows us to remove relational data from a database cleanly and accurately from source tables after archiving the data when we create a delete request we must specify the source file that contains the archived data we want to delete and the control file name to record the information about the process let us have a look at the insert request editor window insert request places data and object definitions from a source file into a destination database when we create an insert request we must specify the source file that contains the data we want to insert the control file name to record information about the process table map and the process options and now finally let's have a look at the restore request editor window the restore request allows us to select data from one or more archive files and restore it to a destination database that is either the original or an alternate database when we create a restore request we must specify the archive file that contains the data we want to restore and that brings us to the end of our demo thank you